Right, it's January the 20th, 2016. It's a week and two days since David Bowie died. Or Bowie, however you want to pronounce it. David Jones. David Robert. David Robert Jones. 1947 to 2016, January the 10th in America's time, New, uh, New York. Well, it's only nine days. It's, I think, but it hasn't got any easier um, mourning his passing. Um, I've been thinking about it more intensely as each day goes by. It hasn't eased at all. Um, obviously I joined the David Bowie official site and of course everyone's grieving collectively and there's loads of images, loads of videos, everything, songs, memories, everyone's contributing and so that in a way um, intensifies the grief, if you know what I mean. Um, I am quite surprised. I did like David Bowie a lot. I'm quite surprised how much it's affected me because it did this with John Lennon was the last one. I felt really bad for three years. Uh, it took me a long time to, to cope with that. Elvis was intense but not as long. Nowhere near as bad for me. Um, so I, I am surprised because David Bowie's been away from us for a long time though he's done bits and pieces and obviously his masterpiece was his final Lazarus and Blackstar genius but I'm going for a walk today I've informed people that I'm doing his family tree I expect other people have done it but it's not easy to get hold of so I, I like to do it myself so I have started it with passion. Um, other people are adding bits and pieces, photos, information and that. It's quite interesting really. I'm hoping to go back as far as I can. I know he's got someone who's, one of his great grandfathers was from Northumberland. So there's always a possibility he was a, he came from Vikings, part of him. Of course, obviously his mother, I think it was his mother, yeah, was partly Irish. So, um, he's got that as well. But, uh, well, the Vikings got over there as well, so we will find out. We will find out where he comes from. It's going to be an interesting journey. He was always talking about aliens and, and coming from um, Mars and all that, you know, so. That's quite interesting, really. I'm out walking down a country lane over at Sand Bay now. There's the Priory there, Wood Spring Priory. See? I'll visit that in a minute. Somebody's coming on a horse now. So I'll probably have to get out of the way. Which I'll go over here. Wait a minute. Let me just go over here. That's it. I'll go. I'll let her go by. Hiya! Afternoon. Lovely, isn't it? Bit on the chilly side, but... So, I've decided to go on this walk. To reflex, really. Um, not being fully well myself, I found I've got a heart hole, a hole in my heart between the septum of the ventricles. Um, this has come on really over the last couple of years. I've been, I reckon, I've had this. We used to put it down to my asthma and my breathlessness, but I've had an echogram. So you never know what when your last minute can come. I've got a great-grandmother, Marianne Fletcher, who married um, 
a smith. She died of micro regurgitation, which is a valve leaking. Um, so I think she was only 54 at the time. It can be an uh, inherited thing. Um, but anyway, it could have been brought on from an infection. They sometimes close over. <sighs> I've got to go and see um, the specialists, the cardiologists, for more examinations um, to see how how, how, how they think it, they're gonna, we're going to manage it. But anyway, I've always told that walking is good for you. Exercise is good for the heart. It strengthens it. Not just sitting around. I've never done that. I used to have um, a, a murmur, a heart, a child hole. I don't know where that was. They said it was evolved, but that closed up a couple of years ago and I was given the all clear in 2008. But I noticed... Um, my blood pressure going up and um, shortness of breath and what else did I find? Yeah, swelling of the fingers and stuff. Yeah, um, I'm very short of breath, which we put down to asthma, but of course it wasn't asthma. My shortness of breath was never due to asthma. I never thought it was. And I didn't really think that the inhalers were helping. So I stopped on myself. It didn't make no difference. And I gave up smoking. Uh, five years ago. Or was it longer than that? No, five, six, seven, eight years ago with the odd relapse. of bone short bursts of relapse. Or I'd have the odd fag over the Christmas. I haven't had a fag now for three years. And initially, when I gave up, I had loads of energy. I was cycling everywhere, walking everywhere. I had even thought about training for the marathon again. But then... This consultant asked me if I'd had a heart attack. The only thing I can put it, it's happened over the last three years, this. I went on that boat ride. I went on a rib boat where you sit with the seat between your legs. And we went over small white horses going to Steep Home Island. And we hadn't been given any instructions really how to position ourselves when we were hitting the waves. So I got whacked loads of times between the legs. And I was badly bruised. I could hardly walk for ages. My pelvis was really, really traumatised. But I just think whether the shock waves from that because I've had loads and loads of acid reflux as well around about the same time since then that uh, I, I was compressed like a consultina inside uh, and this is one of my theories but you try explaining that to anyone they think you're nuts although there are people with quite dodgy injuries usually spinal and neck from going on those rib boats so something happened to me in the last three years. In fact, I never had this problem until I went on that boat. I couldn't, didn't have this breathing problem or the acid reflux. No, I didn't have none of it. I didn't have tightness in my chest. So part of this walk, folks, is remembering good old David Bowie, Bowie, and the state of my health at the start of 2016. I am worried about it now because like I said I had an echogram in 2008 and everything was fine all the holes had closed but because it's been left and misdiagnosed for so long I could have um, pulmonary damage now uh, where the arteries and all that have been damaged and weakened by three years of suffering with this and not being diagnosed properly I've never, never really had anyone explain anything to me. I've never felt as if they're treating me properly, you know, actually doing medical treatment. It was only when I kept insisting something wasn't right. The breathlessness was getting worse and worse so that I'd have to stop every hundred yards or less than that. I make my, I've got tightness in my chest now, but I make myself go out. But of course it does, if you've got a problem, like a leaky heart, it does, it has to work harder. So, you know, 
It's a vicious circle, really. <sighs> Here's a pro again. Let's hope um, something will happen, but I know the last year has been the worst for tightness, uh, which I know when the blood pressure's up. I know that. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't fancy any invasive procedures done. I don't fancy any of that. So, I don't really know. There's a horse again. Yeah, I've done this walk several times now. It's very peaceful. Very peaceful indeed. So I'm recording it. Don't know what it'll come out like. Going down a country lane. Down towards Woodspring Priory. Then I'll go up on St Thomas Point and go across the back there and then down back along the beach. Alright, over and out for now.